getting into the world of prosthetics was always something I really wanted to do. I grew up in the north of England. Um, my father was a manager of a local cinema. I sort of grew up with Star Wars and all the science fiction films of the 70s. I spent a lot of my childhood in my bedroom covering myself in latex, blood and gore. Quite early on I, I realised I, I wanted to make creatures and monsters. Things out of rubber, basically. So, a show like Game of Thrones is kind of like a bucket list. We will actually concept and design the characters. A lot of our crew concentrate on painting. A lot of guys are from a very sculptural sort of background. Hairdressing, definitely an, an artistic process. Whatever the brief is for the character, we have to be practical about things. The artist is going to be able to wear this stuff day in, day out. It's not too heavy. They're going to be able to breathe. So to create a prosthetic makeup and apply it to an actor is very much a team effort. From your sculpting, your mold makers, your people who run silicons, people who put hair onto pieces, you could have a team of 10, 15, 20 people who could do the whole process from start to finish. And then you could have two to five people on the day actually gluing these pieces on. So it's definitely a team effort and it's something I couldn't be responsible for myself. The build of a character we usually start with a life cast, basically making a mould of the actor's head, which we can then make duplicate heads out of. We would then sculpt the makeups and all the forms in a modelling clay all over the head, and then we would make moulds of the modelling clay basically on, on the formers of their face. Once we have our moulds, the majority of our uh, appliances are made out of silicon rubber, which can be glued to the face and then the edges can be blend blended away. We might be applying hair, which are usually punched in with a, a very fine needle, all individually. And then we would need to do duplicate sets of prosthetic appliances for every single day that the character films. It's all quite a painstaking process, really, from start to finish. We usually say an average um, kind of build time is about four weeks for a prosthetic character. Our daily process in the uh, prosthetics department, we usually have like two, three a.m. calls, get our artists in the chair. The process of gluing them into their prosthetics is usually about two to three hours, and the guys would then travel to hair. The moment we start with these guys to the moment they step onto set, it could be five or six hours. And then we would have um, a filming day of say about eight, nine, 10 hours, following the artists around all day is prodding them and maintaining the makeup. Then at the end of the day, we then have the de-rigging process, which is, involves us basically peeling the prosthetics off with a brush and mineral oils. And so you can't just rip these things off because it would take a layer of the skin with, with it. And then we would usually be the last out at the end of the day. What makes Game of Thrones so special? I, I don't think I've ever worked on a project that's got such a varied amount of prosthetics and have such a variety of things to make that it's, it's very rare you'll be on a project and you'll be decapitating somebody the one week and then you'll be doing a full body prosthetic the next week. But the most um, enjoyable memories was probably the end of Hard Home last year. It was very cold, wet, muddy, smoke, snow. We had it all going on. We were covering them in loads of rubber each day. At times it felt like pandemonium and then you just look across and have a look at the monitor and it was so cleverly choreographed and orchestrated you couldn't believe what you were seeing on film was what was right next to you the feeling of achievement was incredible i think that's probably one of the best memories i'll take home so far from game of thrones youtube new game of thrones footage let's break it down all kinds of white walkers behind the scenes grayscale let's go what this is is just intended to highlight the amount of work that goes into the practical effects. You see a little bit of the visual effects going on in the background too because some of these white walker scenes are happening against green screen, some of it's blue screen, but you get the idea. It takes an army of people to make this show and they have some season six footage and some season five footage. Most of the season five stuff is from Hard Home, but you also see a bit of grayscale. Let's talk about the season six stuff first. So just careful for spoilers for potential stuff that might happen on the show. Some of this is gonna be speculation, but because we saw it in this teaser, it's pretty straightforward. So what we're looking at right here is the new Night's King that we saw in the season six trailer. This is not the Night's King from Hard Home. They may have recast the actor. They may explain it some other way, like there's some other Night's King. It seems like there's only one at any given time. The way George R. Martin described him is that the mythical Night's King that used to be the 13th Lord Commander of the Night's Watch probably died a long time ago, so this Night's King is someone new. Re-examining some of the hard home footage, you see that this version of the Night's King looks very different from this version of the Night's King. This is the actor they cast for that hard home episode, so it looks like they probably just recast him. Think of it as being the same thing they did with the mountain. They recast him a couple times. So what's going on here? They're teasing Big White Walker battle. 
We know their White Walker unit was filming things towards the end of their production run, like really, really late in the year last year. So it seems like a big White Walker battle is going to happen again, just somewhere different. If they're not going to go to the wall, who are they going to be fighting? They already took down Hardhome, so there's really only one big option left. It looks like, based on the roots that they're prepping them in here, they're going to be fighting against Bran and the Three-Eyed Raven. All of a sudden, the air just went out of the room. What's going to happen? The Three-Eyed Raven and Bran are just two people. Even if they're really powerful, how are they going to defeat an army? Just keep in mind that this might be happening towards the end of Season 6. If there's only going to be eight seasons, then the producers really have to start pulling aces out of their sleeves. And Bran and the Three-Eyed Raven are really two of those aces. Now, I don't know if the Three-Eyed Raven will end up making it to the end of the series. We might wind up with a situation where he just kind of transfers his responsibility to Bran. It might wind up being a Star Wars situation with Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke, where the Three-Eyed Raven sacrifices himself in some big battle with the White Walkers. We're really in uncharted territory, but it seems like the Three-Eyed Raven's job right now is to just prepare Bran ran for the new role that he's going to take as a green seer. He's meant to replace him, meaning that the three-eyed raven was probably never meant to be around indefinitely. But that is firmly in speculation territory. All we really know is that there's going to be a big badass white walker battle, just like Hardhome. The weird thing to me is who are these White Walkers going to be fighting? Like how will Bran and the Three-Eyed Raven manifest a defense against this many people? So let me know in the comments, just based on this footage, do you think the White Walkers are going to go after the Three-Eyed Raven and Bran? And what do you think is going to happen during that battle? One of my other favorite quotes from this video is that they have to be really careful with the way they take these prosthetics off. So imagine like at the end of this big battle, they get done filming, they call cut, and they say, okay, we're done, and someone just rips their White Walker makeup off. They would actually wind up dead because they'd be ripping half of their skin off. They would totally bleed out. It'd be crazy. There are a whole lot of reasons why Game of Thrones wins so many wars. The, the Really, the conversation this year was about how they won a record number of Emmys for the previous season, for season five. Not only do they dominate the more traditional categories like acting, directing, screenwriting, but they also dominate the technical award categories, which is, is what they do for people who do amazing costumes, visual effects, amazing set design, things like that. Can you even imagine the warehouse where they keep all this stuff that they create? Some of it probably doesn't last and some of it probably gets reused in successive seasons. But that's why I feel like they're really going to push for a spinoff series because they've already honed the craft of making these episodes, making these prosthetics. They have this amazing award-winning team. I think HBO is going to do everything in its power to try and keep them together, even if Dan and Dave don't want to do a spinoff series themselves. It's really a question of finding the right producers and the right writers because George R. Martin said that when they first bought the rights to do Game of Thrones, HBO was like, we want to see Game of Thrones on our network for 10 years. And Martin was like, yeah, that sounds great. I, I would love to have 10 years of Game of Thrones. But because Dan and Dave have only been talking about eight seasons, that would mean that they would have to do a spinoff. But there hasn't really been any meaningful conversation about that in the last year or so. They're mostly focused on promoting the main series. But don't worry, even after this season, we still have two more years. So giveaway time. Congratulations to this week's DVD giveaway winner, Cameron Ward. Just be sure to private message me on the back end of my channel. It's just on the about page so I can get your contact info. What's going to happen is I'll post a new bonus video on Sunday. That's when the new round of the giveaway will start. And for those that are asking, there is a whole bunch of Daredevil that I still need to get through. Don't worry, that will happen through the course of this week. There's just a whole bunch of stuff that came back. So you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook for updates on when videos are coming. Those links are at the bottom of the description. If you guys haven't seen it, the actor who played Stannis Baratheon was saying some funny things. You can click here to learn all about that. And you can click here for the Red Band trailer again. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.